Hey, I'm sorry to eco one. Try to give you novel arguments regarding abstruse topics. So today I want to try to impart my love of snowflakes and why I think they're not only pretty but also scientifically interesting. Um, so first things to start with sort of one of the more general comments. Entropy is an idea in science. It's often talked about in terms of order and disorder, and um, and this is relevant to snowflakes because when water freezes, its entropy actually decreases. Um, whereas you know we're always used to entropy increasing because the molecules of ice sort of hydrogen bond and exist in that well-known locked um, structure that, that, that accounts for the rigidity of ice and you know that and, and, and the simultaneous loss in heat energy is compensated for by the increase in the order of the ice structure which gives rise to these striking snowflakes that we see in nature so I want to address um, how that happens molecularly which I'll do in just a moment here but I also want to talk about specific um, uh, I guess conditions under which different types of snowflakes form. So let's start with the molecular stuff. Um, here we see a uh, you know sort of hydrogen bonded water molecules. And the thing to remember is, although there are two hydrogens and one oxygen, here's another view. Um, each oxygen can hydrogen bond with two hydrogens. So one um, each molecule of water will actually be hydrogen bonded to um, well, hydrogen bonded four times total. And the the sort of tetrahedral-like structure, that the superstructure that arises, is very relevant to the hexagonal shape that snowflakes end up forming in. And um, just as, real quick, like I think we've already seen some above, but I showed you guys some three-sided um, snowflakes, and I'm going to show you a 12-sided one later. But they always exist as three, six, and 12-sided shapes. And again, that's uh, a direct consequence of this molecular um, confirmation and in and, and, and particular way in which water hydrogen bonds with itself um, but you know of course there's of, of course there's more than just this hydrogen bonding um, I don't know if you guys have ever taken a class in organic chemistry or anything but if if you've ever learned how to crystallize a solid then you'll know that often um, crystallizing a solid has to like like these this these waters that are gonna freeze to each other and, and form the snowflake have to form around a nucleus um, you know, some 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 uh, materials or substances crystallize a lot easier than others, but with water, it takes um, a pretty specific temperature range to form snowflakes, and also, you know, the right amount of humidity will will, will cause different for snowflakes to form. But also, um, the the type of nucleus that forms, like uh, around say a dust particle, is uh, very relevant to. Um, snowflakes being able to form at all, and if they do form, what type of snowflake they form. So here's a weird one. It does have six sides, but it's not perfectly symmetrical, and it's um, it's a fairly planar structure. I can say that if, if, this, were, if this were forming at, say, 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or a few degrees Celsius, um, and it fell to the ground, we'd probably see some branches um, sprout off as it, as it got warmer, and that's, that's what we see as it fell. Um, yeah, I'm just going to move on to a slightly more um, flat and planar one next because I want to just relate like so faster growth um, causes branches to form so this, this snowflake probably would have formed slowly and since it was slowly probably at low humidity um, so that, that's when you get something like this now here's a 12 sided one and you can see that it's it's pretty branched as well. So the uh, the nucleation process of this one must have been quite interesting. I, I I can't I can't speculate on that. But the formation of such a large number of branches leads me to think that warmer air um, caused this to happen, and probably higher humidity. Um, although the tips are, are are not super narrow, so maybe not maybe not super high humidity. So if I were to guess, I'd say this would form at maybe mm, nine or ten degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, once again, with sort of a a very like unique nucleus around which uh, it must have formed. Um, yeah, and the cavities that you see in in the middle also indicate that um, growth was fastest near the edges, um, which which is also indicative of sort of like the type of, of development that some some snowflakes undergo. All right, so here's an electron micrograph of a snowflake nucleus. And I just wanted to present this to show um, 
you know, just how vital the nucleation process is because, you know, snowflake will have to form around this. Um, and, and even here on the left side of the micrograph, you can see a hexagonal shape within that, that cylindrical guy kind of uh, projecting out of it. Um, so just to make some general comments while we're looking at, at this, you know, typically what you'll have is a, is a, a dust particle. And then, you know, water molecules, I guess, will con condense around that. And, and that'll, that'll become the nucleus of the snowflake. And then, depending on the conditions, usually a hexagonal lattice forms um, and, and can grow into a prism. Depending on the temperature and humidity, um, branching and will, will, will occur, um, causing arms to form around that. Um, and, and so this would be sort of the second step in, in the process where we have just a hexagonal plate. Um, yeah, and then and on the one I'm about to show you after this, which we'll just wait for for a second, we'll see like the hexagonal plate that's formed, and then around that we have secondary plates, um, which leads me to believe that this, this snowflake probably would have formed um, slowly and under fairly uh, homogeneous conditions, granted the uh, homogeneity of the structure. And that's, that's in stark contrast, both in physical form and in um, conditions of formation to this snowflake that we're looking at now, which is highly branched and therefore probably formed quite quickly. So maybe in a human environment that had just cooled down, um, or, or maybe this guy formed as he was falling, um, and, and that caused more, uh, more branches to, to sprout with longer and narrower tips. Um, oops, sorry, my phone just went off. And, and this one would be the most humid and, and hottest of all, and you can see that due to the really uh, prominent, thin, long projections that we see on the branches here. So we can definitely predict that this would have formed uh, under a little bit warmer circumstances. Um, this guy here is just kind of, I just wanted to show like, sort of a macro structure, um, bigger than just one snowflake. And, uh, you know, here we have, again, have a lot of branching. So now I'm going to leave it to you to tell me how that must have formed, since here I'll prose this now. Um, yeah, so this next one we're going to see is, uh, is very narrow. For this, I would say, like, let's say if the air were like a little bit warmer, then we would then we'd see maybe something like this. But also, I, I, for this, I'd get something like 8.6 degrees Fahrenheit with uh, you know some degree of humidity or something like that for for the, for this structure here. I just I just wanted to put this one up because it's so pretty. But yeah, um, and just another comment about this: the details of this are be quite frank beyond me, but generally you have two types of nucleation process. Either the water will kind of float over the um, surface of the crystal until it forms on a column, or it'll sort of immediately uh, sort of attach wherever it is. And, and uh, in this second case, or sorry, in the first case is what we would have seen to form this guy here. Here's another snowflake uh, with a very highly branched appearance. Um, so this one might have formed just sort of like the one we just saw, but then um, have, have like continued to fall to the earth and, and sprouted more uh, uh, branches as, as it fell, uh, would be my guess for that one. So yeah, so and, and another, another interesting thing about this is, like, especially with something this branch, what I suspect that this is, it, this this probably f formed in a fairly like windy storm or so, and the reason I think that is, I think it probably like started and, and nucleated, and then sort of got blown back up, and then you know fell and became warm, and then got blown back up into the cloud, and then fell and came warm, and that's why you see so so many branches on that one, um, compared to some of the other ones we've seen. All right, so. You know, that was, that was my attempt to sort of walk you through this without knowing all the details myself, but I really hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.